So I loved Oppenheimer. I also love Barbie. I love both probably equally. I don't think I can pick a favorite. They were just so different. I felt like they both catered to niches in my brain, I guess. I feel like each of those movies were like definitely up my alley. So I was lucky that like the two big movies of this year were like things I would enjoy. Like I definitely learned a lot about history, especially about this one historical figure that I otherwise wouldn't have really like cared too much about and just like an insight in what politics look like in general and also just I felt like it accurately had a variety of different people with different opinions on the politics of the time how Oppenheimer could meet Florence Pugh and not immediately become a communist because that was like the height of when exactly did he meet Florence Pugh because like McCarthyism became the big thing like it was the 40s but I think I think he started being i'm terrible with dates so if anyone can help me out with dates okay here's a small editing alley nerdy history interjection so mccarthy was a wisconsin senator from 1947 to i think 1957 so mccarthyism wasn't exactly a thing at this time when Oppenheimer would have had his connections to the communists, but it's not like the the Red Scare or like the stigma against communists didn't exist yet. McCarthy just really capitalized upon it and made it like an actual movement with like exposing people who held cards, like card holding communist party members. I'm still not surprised that even though Oppenheimer did have close connections to the communist party that he still didn't want to be a part of it because of the stigma and it seemed to be ever growing yeah but the history of mccarthyism's really interesting so i actually might do a video on that one day because i find it really fascinating about how crazy these people actually were i feel like most people know mccarthy was crazy but i don't think we really know how crazy he was so yeah mccarthyism not a thing yet but communist stigma was definitely ever high and i am not surprised oppenheimer did not want to be completely tied to it oh that was something i said too i was like damn they're just gonna put rami malik in this movie and just not have him say anything like he just didn't say sh <gasps> but then when he ended up being like the big like revealer of strauss's corruption and the sh <gasps> things he did i was like oh <gasps> Yeah, I think Oppenheimer never became a communist, even though he definitely sympathized with them for a few reasons. Probably one stigma, too, because of, like, pressure from co-workers and, like, the institutions he was working for. Because every time he did get involved with, like, more left-wing projects, like unionizing, he tended to get yelled at or criticized. So I think that definitely played a part in him never really officially having a connection. I think he just couldn't. It seemed to me that he was more of like an opportunist he was kind of like a rosa luxembourg type i feel that's kind of the impression i got from the movie but feel free to correct me if i'm wrong yeah okay so you're mad that it didn't it skipped a lot of the important parts of the project himself and how other scientists feared the bomb now i could see if you're like a science person how you might be disappointed that they left a lot of that stuff out as a politics person i felt like i I got everything I could have wanted from that movie because the main thing about the movie like the main focus of the movie was like the politics of it I guess it wasn't all of it there was like the science of it but it was more just like his involvement in politics like before he was like involved with the government he was associated with communists and part of union efforts and then also once he was involved with the US government there was a lot of talk about the politics with World War II even before he got involved with like making the bomb they like talked about his identity as a Jewish man which I felt was very important to establishing his character and why he'd want to be involved in you know World War II obviously because he felt scared and threatened as a Jewish man at the time which is completely fair and after like spending time in Germany I could see how being involved in this probably felt personal to him as a nerd for this era of history the narrative is a plus it's just that me personally I think often Oppenheimer was just one of many members of a scientific community ready to lobby against the bomb. Meanwhile,
while people like Teller push the arms race narrative and skipping over in the movie might leave room for some bound up thinking Teller was right. Okay, I felt like they did do a good job at talking about the arms race narrative though, because I think it pretty clearly established that a lot of the intention in making the bomb was less about ending the war and more about making an atomic bomb before the Soviets did. They framed it as they were going to use the bomb against the threat when in reality it was being used to intimidate something they also viewed as a threat. How many Soviet spies got in? Yeah, they do mention it, but I feel like in terms of like the story, it was kind of unimportant. How important was it that Soviet spies got into the bomb? It was already kind of implied that the US like military and politicians were paranoid because they were in like the dilemma they're like okay if we build this bomb the soviet union's probably gonna also build a bomb to compete with us but if we don't build the bomb what if the soviet union builds the bomb anyways it became fuel for mccarthyism and the whole trial is reactionary anger for letting the soviets get the bomb there's a lot of inconsistency with the red scare stuff it's more just like anything to like make people paranoid but if there weren't any spies they were still probably going to argue that the soviets would have built the bomb um, anyways they would have just reframed it i don't think the spies really matter in terms of like the red scare stuff that was more important to the post-world war ii narrative yeah yeah for sure i think generally hyper focusing on the soviet paranoia or like the spies like the involvement of spies in the bomb wasn't important to the this narrative they needed to spend more time focusing on oppenheimer his connections and what he did yeah there was so much they also could have unpacked just because history and someone's life is hard to pack into a movie, but I felt like leaving that out was probably okay. I mean, they did have moments where they had people get arrested or caught being involved with Soviet or being suspected communists. Like, it's not like they didn't show that at all, because they absolutely did show people getting arrested, caught for their involvement. So it's not like they just completely ignored it. I felt like there was still, like, the Cold War paranoia was still very clearly shown in a way that was well well done. I felt like unlike any other like historical movie or just any piece that involves the Soviet Union in any way or communism, this one felt the most like realistic and human. Oh, he was very political. That's like the whole thing. The main focus is on kind of them trying to politically insulate Oppenheimer and keep him from being able to speak out for his politics because he was notoriously left-wing and his his entire life he was pretty consistent on his politics from what I saw in the movie he was like consistently like a liberal maybe even like more left than a liberal because he was involved with communism I'd probably describe him as like a democratic socialist in a way I don't know exactly how I'd describe it but he was definitely left-wing and advocated for more progressive policies and used the profile he gained as the father of the atomic bomb to advocate for those values. So he did feel guilt for dropping the bomb. However, he did find a way to navigate the guilt by using his profile to advocate for more progressive policies. And also, I'm pretty sure he advocated on shutting down like the nuclear program or not having there be like a nuclear part of the, the military. He advocated against it being further used. And also, I felt like they did a pretty good job mentioning from Strauss's perspective that scientists hated Strauss because he advocated for the nuclear program and established it and he was like iced by the scientific community for that. So they mentioned that that was the scientific consensus too. I think the whole point of the movie is to offer more nuance on a misunderstood character or not character, like an actual person that existed. I don't think it's like defending him, but I think it's pretty important to show that someone who created a weapon that did such horrific things felt guilt for it and tried to advocate against it happening ever again. And especially at a time where we're constantly in fear of nuclear war, I feel like that's a pretty impactful thing to put out to the public. I thought it was really well done and it showed a very interesting perspective and biography of a person who otherwise would just be known as the guy who made the atomic 
bomb. I think it's important to show how the creator felt about his creation because that added more insight and intention and what to do in the future. Because the movie did a really good job at not defending the making of the bomb. I think it adequately showed why they wanted to make it and drop it. I don't think they like totally ignored that people genuinely felt there was good reason to drop the bomb while still showing that people had that perspective i don't think that the movie ended up defending it which i thought was really well done because i think there's no justification for dropping it but it leaves me personally wanting a wider lens on the morality of it all i feel like that's gonna have to be something talked about because of the movie i think this was more just supposed to be a biography like a biopic just kind of showing what happened what these people were thinking and saying and i think the point of a movie like this would be to open up a conversation about future dilemmas like this so i don't think the movie was obligated to have that conversation for us i think think it's more just opening up a conversation. I feel like it's not on the movie makers to elaborate on that debate. I think their job is to bring up the point, especially for stuff like that, bring up the point for people to think about and discuss. I thought it was very mind-opening with creating that line of thinking. But I think it pretty clearly elaborated how destructive this bomb was, and also the uncertainty that setting off the bomb um, had a near zero but still a chance to set the whole atmosphere on fire that's crazy to think that they were willing to take that risk that's like insane and then i thought where they show the test the whole test scene where they're testing the first bomb was like insane that was an insane scene and also i felt like that scene was just enough to show the size and the power of this bomb without like actually having it be involved with killing people. I like that Nolan chose to show the test bomb rather than the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. One, because Oppenheimer was there for the test bombing, but not for the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And two, because that would be pushing it a little too far in terms of like being gruesome and horrifying. The bomb is wrong to use, but it was justified to be used because of people's personal feelings involved. Yeah, I think people convinced themselves it was necessary and it was framed in a way where it was necessary when you look deeper into it and it it really wasn't. Four, three, God. two, here it comes. One. Oh, I did the same thing. Oh. oh, that's actually really cool. You know, maybe when they said you would feel the explosion, it was like a metaphorical thing. <laughs> I jumped. I jumped in the movie. I knew it was gonna do that. I There were multiple points in Oppenheimer where I jumped and that was one of them. <laughs> yeah, because like the bomb explodes and it goes completely silent and then all of a sudden you just hear like the, the recoil when it hits the people, which I guess is like was a cool choice. Now that I like have seen it, I'm like, oh, because they like wouldn't have heard it until the impact got to them, right? Like the however, like the science science something science so it's like silent for a bit until it like hits people and that's when you hear it. the shock wave yes which is like a cool choice first of all like to like follow like how it would hit a, a, a person's ears eyes and stuff that was cool but also just having the moment of silence just watching the bomb go off was like whoa like whoa like it's like unbelievably like like jaw dropped but then it hits you and you're like Fuck! <laughs> i mean now that i know that's how it'd be i definitely want to watch it back and i feel like i'd appreciate it much more second watch now that it's not gonna scare the shit out of me it scared the fuck out of me i was like oh i was like getting ready for it to hit i was like Literally all of my friends, we were all plugging our ears. We were all literally doing that. That was so accurate. 
but that scene was very good. So I like that that's how they showed like the power of the bomb because they didn't need to show them bombing a city with tens of thousands of people in it. But also the most chilling part of the movie, which is like what almost makes this, this was honestly like a horror movie. Like I felt more dread watching this movie than I have watching most horror movies. Not a lot of movies have made me just feel dread and just like mentally tortured as this movie. It was incredible. Like this movie made me feel things and it was like wow. So what it did well is that instead of showing any of the bombings of the city, I really liked how it kind of just shows them announcing that Hiroshima was bombed. Existential dread. It was definitely dread. It was definitely existential. I definitely felt incredible levels of fear and that's a good thing. Movies should do that. They should make you feel positive feelings too, but this was not a movie of positive feelings and I wasn't expecting it to do that. It's told through loudspeakers that Hiroshima has been bombed and right in that moment you see the reality of that start to hit Oppenheimer and he gives a speech after they find out Hiroshima has been bombed and in my opinion this was the best scene in the whole movie because I felt like it perfectly illustrated what this really meant and just like everything coming together and how he would have really felt because it's not like once again it's not like he saw the bomb go off he was left to imagine what his creation had done to people which is terrifying because you see like the world just starts shaking and everything becomes fuzzy but he's also like trying to remain positive for the the team that helped him build this so it's just him speaking through this huge trauma response and him imagining like bodies disintegrating like he's just imagining the destruction his creation did to real life human beings and it is easily one of the most terrifying things i have ever watched it is just heart-wrenching dreadful and it's just like so incredibly well done how like everything is just like hitting him all at once while he's trying to speak encouragingly to like his team Oppenheimer's most confusing moments explained. Did you guys feel confused by anything in Oppenheimer? Because I felt like it was laid out pretty clearly. Oh, the black and white thing. Okay. I discussed with people and the whole black and white thing is just differentiating. Whenever it's in black and white, it's from Strauss's point of view. Will contain spoilers. Yeah, guys, spoilers this. for history. History spoilers. <laughs> no, just kidding. I get it because it's only focusing on certain plot points and a lot of the things are exciting in terms of like how they're filmed i can that was a joke after the movie i was like yeah i'm gonna go watch lore videos about oppenheimer my friend was like you mean history and i was like yeah lore video <laughs> i'm gonna talk about strauss a little bit first i didn't catch the most about strauss and i also just like generally don't know the most about him but from what i i gathered he was like getting ready to be elected to cabinet to a cabinet position and he previously had been involved in creating a nuclear division committee in the american government which oh my god yeah i <gasps> hated him i was like this he's so good i just hate this man right now he was mad that the scientific community generally felt negatively towards him because he wanted to develop nuclear strategies more and he tried to ruin oppenheimer's reputation and keep him from being able to speak in public by taking away like his security rights i think feel free to like elaborate i'm like a little shaky on like all the details because i didn't know much before the movie but he basically wanted to keep oppenheimer from being able to speak out against him therefore he created it wasn't really a trial it was like a hearing where it would be almost impossible for oppenheimer to win therefore shutting him up as mm -hmm. nolan's film shows Strauss hated Oppenheimer and we find out that the reasons for this were both personal and political. Mm -hmm. It's that Strauss didn't like that Oppenheimer didn't really advertise his Jewish connections. What? 
Right. So, wait. Was he mad that he was, like, not constantly talking about how he was Jewish? Did he feel, like, deceived that he didn't tell him that he was Jewish or something? Like, why? What the fuck? <gasps> God, I hate- I hate this era. I hate this era of politics. Literally, everyone was so weird about Jewish people. I mean, people still are. But, like, they were so weird. Yeah, like, what do you want? Like, you, you put a star David at- what, what do you want? Like, I don't really think that Oppenheimer was actively practicing religion in any way. I think he was just, like, culturally, ethnically Jewish. Probably raised Jewish, but from the movie, it doesn't seem like he was a temple-going guy. It didn't seem like he really practiced religion in any way, so that's really f***ing <gasps> stupid. I hate politicians back in this day. I hate conservatives, and I especially hate the conservatives from the 30s and the 40s because they were the biggest <gasps> assholes. They literally called the new deal the jew deal oh also they do mention the new deal because oppenheimer goes i'm a new deal loving liberal or something or new deal democrat yeah and i'm like okay pop off Oppenheimer's testimony had challenged and mocked Strauss's position on exporting radioactive isotopes. It fueled Strauss's personal vendetta against him. Okay, sorry, get got. Have bad opinion. That's freedom of speech, baby. That's freedom of speech, baby. You be stupid publicly and advocate for stupid things publicly. You get clowned on publicly. That's politics. And that's freedom of speech, baby. He wasn't a practicing Jew? Okay. That's what I thought. So, like, why would he advertise that unless you're like actively practicing religion like you can just casually be proud of like your your background and your culture you don't have to like warn everyone <laughs> like i don't what did he want like a warning just right when you meet someone first conversation disclaimer i'm jewish just so you know just a warning <laughs> so stupid. I hate Strauss. He sucks. Lewis thought that Oppenheimer had said something to Albert Einstein at the Institute's Lake yeah. soon after they first met, but as we learn, this was fueled by his own paranoia because the two scientists were not discussing him at all. He thought they were talking about him because he's an egotistical political maniac. This movie definitely did not defend the American government. This made the American government look like shit <gasps> because all the politicians were just big assholes. <gasps> they all suck damage to oppenheimer's oh my god wait i didn't know what strauss actually looked like wow wow that's really good that's like wow yeah oh yeah he's got that <gasps> up me customization racist face you know when you like make a <gasps> up looking me on purpose that's what racists look like he tried to highlight that researching and developing more hydrogen bombs would result in an escalated nuclear arms race which as we know did turn out to be true yeah well no <gasps> shit. like i don't know why so many people are like yeah but if we don't make it the soviets are gonna make it anyways like uh, i don't really think I think that was paranoia. I don't really think they were going to do that. I don't really think they would have if we didn't. I feel like a lot of military decisions are just for show. Same with Germany. Well, yeah, considering Oppenheimer literally studied in Germany, he knew how smart the people were there. But if you knew for sure that if you made a bomb that your enemy would also make one in retaliation, why wouldn't you just wait to see if your enemy builds a bomb? trying to rationalize this yeah you keep it secret or you don't keep it secret have it known so people don't <gasps> with you yeah make it don't use it keep it secret just in case they make it but no they had to like one up the soviet union or just don't make the bomb at all if they make a bomb then make a bomb i don't know just like messy and supporting causes like the spanish war efforts using the party's influence yeah oppie was like his nickname okay wait i don't know much about the spanish war republicans in the national Republicans were loyal to the left-leaning popular front government of the Second Spanish Republic and consisted of various socialist, communist, separatist, anarchist, and Republican parties, some of which had opposed the governments in the pre-war period. The opposing nationalists were all alliance of phalangists, monarchists, conservatives, and traditionalists led by a military junta among- Oh, Francisco Franco! This is where Francisco Franco comes in! That's not a good thing. He sucked. Francisco Franco mentioned he is still dead. He achieved. Oh, so this was when nationalists took over. Okay. Francisco Franco gained power. Wait, that's kind of scary. I didn't realize how long Francisco Franco was in power. 
and he ruled Spain until 1975. So that's like 26 years. It's like the first big fascist movement in Europe. That's scary. I don't know much about like international conflicts. I think I was like vaguely familiar. I was familiar with Francisco Franco, but I wasn't really familiar with this. American history class. Sorry, I have gaps. I'm trying my best, but I will look into it. Okay, so yeah, he sent money to the Spanish War. Did they ever consider that it's okay to give money to the Republicans of Spain because he didn't want nationalists to take over because he is a Jewish man? I feel like that's a pretty fair thing to- you'd rather have- some socialist no they didn't care no i'm they don't but like looking back i'm just trying to like point out how goofy this is with the perspective we have now of course i totally completely understand why we would you especially as a jewish man but also just anyone in general would rather fund a socialist group in defense of a nationalist group if you're remotely left-wing at all that's not that crazy it was probably because the Soviet Union backed them. That's probably why. That's definitely why. Oppie had also slept with close friend Ruth Tolman while he was married to Kitty. Yeah, okay, let's talk about him being a, a womanizer. I think it's time. Honestly, I was blown away at the riz this man had. What's up with, like, controversial historical figures from around, from the 1900s? having like insane riz. Historical figures with like socialist connections just had insane riz. I don't know what it was about. And yes, I'm- I only in my mind am thinking of Oppenheimer and Fidel Castro, but I'm sure there are more. Because the- the story of the riz that these two figures had just blows my mind. It blows my mind how much game they had with women. It's just impressive, honestly. I mean, Fe Fidel was impressive because he risked his way out of death. That's like in insanely impressive. He had sex with his ex-girlfriend that was sent to a assassinate him. That's awesome. Like him or not, that's crazy. He risked his way out of death, bro. That's crazy. Like, no one has had game like that in history. Like, he's number one for that. And was a part of Strauss's hearing. In particular, this guy's the real hero raised of the, movie. the question surrounding why Rami Malek's David Hill stood up for Oppenheimer at that confirmation. I mean, one, this was very politically, strategically smart. Also, the just thing to do, like the right thing to do to like expose Strauss. But also, yeah, showing this corruption would definitely have make a good case for not using the bombs again because it's showing that they're actively trying to hide academic minds and voices that say that the bomb shouldn't be used. I think it's pretty clear why he would do that. While Oppie didn't support the petition and believed that the bomb needed to be used, years later, David Hill stood up for him mm. at the Strauss hearing. I could see how you could have a lot of spite after that first meetup, but being able to like get over that and recognize everything else that's happened and still doing the just thing, it's pretty cool. I feel like the movie did a really good job showing why like Red Scare <gasps> shit is so harmful and honestly kind of stupid and irrational which is definitely like a, a message to push out definitely like a very interesting message do not diddle kids it's no good diddling yeah. kids do i mean chicken nuggets kids, it's no good they taste kids. so good in my mouth do not diddle kids it's no yeah. good diddling kids chicken do nuggets not kids, it's no good diddling white girl on the beach